Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about responsive design with Angular Material. So we are going to be taking the home component of our application that we see here displayed on the screen and we're going to use it to add it responsive features. To better explain what we are about to do, let's switch here to a larger window. So we can see here the same screen that we saw before, the home screen of our application. And we are here in a wider type of screen where there is more space here to the left and to the right. This type of layout is adopted, for example, for mobile in portrait mode, where we only have here a single column of cards. But in larger screens, we would like to have here a grid of cards with, for example, three columns, if space allows it. Then, if there is not enough space for three columns, we would like to see two columns of cards side by side. And only as a last resort, if there is only space for one column of cards, then we want to display that to the user instead. So let's have a look here at the developer tools. If you right click anywhere on the screen and you click here on the inspect option, you're going to open the dev tools. Now we can safely ignore here the other options we have available. And we're going to click here on the device toolbar. This is going to put here the dev tools on a special mode where the viewport is going to be adapted here to the content of this drop down. For example, if we want to simulate what our application looks like, for example, on an iPad, we can select here the iPad and the screen here automatically adapts. We can see that the iPad is here in portrait mode, but you can also see what this looks like in landscape mode. For example, in the particular case of the iPad, it would be great to have here the space for two columns of cards in landscape mode, but not in portrait mode. We can also switch this to mobile mode, choosing, for example, the iPhone X, for example. And now we have here the iPhone X in portrait mode. We can see that there is only place for one column of cards. This is ideal for this mobile format. But if we put this here on landscape mode, we can see that we have here a little bit more space, although not really enough to show two full columns of cards to the user. So as we can see, depending on the device where we are, we have different requirements and we would like to use the space that we have available better in a different way in order to show more content to the user. Now, all of this that I've been mentioning so far can be achieved using plain CSS responsive media queries. Let's have a look at what these special CSS queries look like. So this is standard browser functionality that allows us to define CSS. It is only going to be applicable in certain form factors and other features. For example, if we want to add some CSS to our screen, for the situations where the browser window is 600 pixels or smaller, we can do that with a CSS media query. Here is a media query that targets screens that have a max width of 600 pixels. For those type of screens and those type of screens only, this body CSS class here is going to get applied and the color of the body is going to be light blue. In screens that don't match this CSS media query, then this CSS will not be present. This is standard browser functionality and this can be used to style our Angular material screens just as it can be used to style any other type of screen. As we can imagine, writing CSS media queries, especially if we are supporting multiple different types of devices, can become a bit of a maintenance nightmare. So we are going to show you how to make your Angular material screens responsive without having to write your own CSS media queries. Under the hood, we will be using media queries, of course, it's the only way to make a screen responsive and that's what Angular Material uses internally, but we won't have to write the media queries ourselves. This is hard to get right, especially if we are supporting different types of devices. These dimensions are not standard, they change over time. So we want as much as possible to avoid having to write our own CSS media queries. 
one of the key layout elements of the Angular Material Library that we're going to be using to make our screens responsive is going to be the Mat Grid List component. So this is a two-dimensional list that arranges cells into a grid-based layout. We can see here an example of a basic grid with two columns and two rows available. So we can style this as we want, we can style the number of columns that we want to use, we can style here the space between the cells, etc. There are many different styling options. So this is one of the main components that we're going to be using to make our screens responsive. Let's have a look at this component in action. We are going to switch here to our code window and here we are going to go to the course card list component. So this is the component that contains here a list of cards that we see here on the screen. So in our home component, if you remember, we're going to have here in the template two instances of courses card list. So the component corresponds to what we see here on the screen, the home component. The first course card list that we see here is the beginner's courses that we see here as we scroll down. And the second course card list instance corresponds here to the advanced courses here on the advanced tab. So we're going to be modifying the current version of the courses card list component in order to use the material grid list and support different numbers of columns depending on the screen size. Let's then refactor here the course card list component into using the material grid list component internally in order to make it responsive. Besides the use of the material grid list component, we are also going to be covering other responsive techniques that allow us to write responsive screens in Angular Material without writing our own media queries. Among other things, we are going to show how to make responsive dialogues using Angular Material with a minimum of custom CSS. So let's then get started using the material grid list component. This is coming right up in our next lesson.